What's going on? This is episode 30.5 of Studio Practice. This is a comment response video in relationship to episode 30. Episode 30 was entitled Electronic Music Synthesis as a Critique Tool for the Evaluation of Contemporary Art. And effectively what I did in that episode was to lay out a case for understanding the way that the fundamental elements of electronic music synthesis work, the attack mode, decay, sustain, and release as a model for understanding or for evaluating, for discerning quality, for lack of a better word, in contemporary art. The first comment that I received was from Ron Hemphill, who suggested that the ADSR method might not simply be a good tool for the evaluation of objectified work, of work of, of other people. Uh, but it might serve the artist uh, as an effective tool within the studio as a way of understanding the fecundity, the potential of one's own work, that that same tool might be used as a way of analyzing work in progress in the studio. I think this is an excellent, excellent suggestion. Uh, in my humble opinion, I think that um, that the issue involved is picking the spot and picking the time with which to use the tool. There's something that uh, we refer to as the critical voice of judgment. You can think of it as the, the angel over this shoulder and the devil over this shoulder that rides herd over the creative process, oftentimes destroying the creative process through, through a kind of negative criticality. I've found that uh, in my own work, I strive to get into a zone where the critical voice of judgment is quieted. So the ADSR method, being a critical thinking tool, I think can be an extremely powerful way of trying to understand the quality of one's own work. But I would suggest that it be used, that it, that it punctuate uh, the creative process rather than being used in a way to push a kind of analytical through line through the work. The second comment was from Taylor Stewart, who asked my opinion about providing access points within work to those who might not have, quote unquote, the reinforcement of academic knowledge. I agree that this is an excellent issue I think that work should be able to transcend any kind of academic or educational background, to be quite frank with you. And I think that it's important uh, in this model that we're looking at to take a look at the attack phase of a work of contemporary art or design. What do I mean by this in very, very specific and very plain terms? I would encourage you to think about the work as a kind of retinal object or an optical object or experience. I would encourage you to think of the contemporary, uh, the piece of contemporary art or design as something that makes itself available to us initially through our eyes and that it's extremely important, in my opinion, to capture the attention of the audience immediately through the kind of formal optical or retinal components of a work. To my mind, that is a critical component of addressing Taylor's issue, which is that if the work has a presence to it, if it has a formal optical retinal component to the work, the work at least has the potential to draw in the audience. And to be quite honest, I think that that is a pre-linguistic form of cognition. In other words, Taylor's question ultimately revolved around academic language. I believe that form, that optical, formal, and retinal components of works of both contemporary art and design are not linguistic, they're not language-based. They work in a completely different way. 
Taylor, thanks for the question. I think it's an excellent, uh, an excellent issue to raise. I'd also like to, uh, I'd also like to thank David Kabianka for the link that he sent. You can find it in episode 30 in the comments section to a New York Times article. Uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, finally, I'd like to encourage people to don't click away. This is kind of boilerplate, but this is really important. The comments and questions really do provide fuel and provide future subject matter for the video series. So by all means, please leave any questions, comments, concerns, bones to pick, uh, or uh, the components of the videos that you like so that I can address them. Um, also, if you share the link or subscribe, it really does help. So until next time, thank you very much.